were here last week, so I'm glad you guys are here for this week. Um, we're going to start with the three cool things about essential oils. Some of you guys already know this, so don't blurt out the answers. <laughs> um, does everybody know anything about essential oils? Do you know anything about essential oils? You do a little bit. Okay, cool. Awesome. So there's three things that are very cool about essential oils. They're 100% safe and effective. We all use doTERRA essential oils. We know that they are CPTG. Yes, yeah, CPTG. Certified pure tested grade oils, which means they are pure oils. They don't have any fillers in them. They don't have any additives. They're 100% pure. So that's the first cool thing about essential oils. They're, they're 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. So like your herbal supplements that you get at some health food stores and things like that, they're 50 to 70 times more powerful than those. That's, um, that's really powerful. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> um, the next thing that's cool about essential oils, and there's going to be a quiz, so you guys really need to pay attention, right? And if you want a pen or you want clipboards, <laughs> take notes, let me know and I'll bring them around. <laughs> um, the second thing is that they're more effective than a lot of modern approaches that you might find in traditional medicine for people and for pets. You know this. Yes, she has a very good testimony. In a minute, I'll, I'll talk to I'll see what Kelsey's got going on. So they're also more affordable than traditional medicine and over-the-counter drugs or supplements or whatever you can buy at the, the grocery store or the drugstore. Um, they're, you know, people have this misconception that essential oils are expensive, but when it's a few drops of an essential oil versus a trip to the vet or a trip to the doctor, it is immensely more cost effective than doing either one of those things, right? So those are the first, those are the top three cool things about essential oils. Did you guys all get that? Okay. All right. So, you know what? I forgot to see if anybody wanted a beadlet so that we can all stay awake. Beadlets? I need a beadlet. <laughs> sure. Let's all have a beadlet. I have spe spearmint and I have on guard. Let them I'm decide. Pass them Tell them what the difference you guys is. Decide. The spearmint is everybody had a spearmint last week. It'll wake you up for zoom, give you a little supermint. A oh, supermint. It's a supermint. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then the other one, the on guard is uh, I love on guard. That's like my favorite thing. It's uh, what do you what do you want to say about on guard really quick, Linda? On guard. On guard. It's a protective blend. There you go. It's a protective one. Yeah, it's it boosts your immune system and kills all the bugs that you've been exposed to when you went grocery shopping. And, pick and it's and know. it's very yummy. It's my favorite. My favorite. Just all right. So now we're all going to be awake, except for me because I didn't take one yet. So it comes back around. <laughs> all right. So. The next thing I'm going to go over, and we're, we're kind of on a theme of threes, okay? So we're going to be three, three, and three. The next three things that we're going to talk about are the ways you can use essential oils for your dogs, okay? So they, you can diffuse them. Noelle has some oil diffusing and a diffuser over on her desk. You guys can't really smell it out here, but it is working on all of us. So we're all going to be calm. George. <laughs> George. George is so uh, calm, aren't you? So dogs, I know some of you guys know this, their olfactory system is way, way better oh. than ours. Like 10,000 to 100,000 times better, depending on the breed. Plus, bloodhounds have an immense sense of smell. Like three, They have like 300 million uh, sense receptors in their, in their nose. So that's why they use bloodhounds for tracking people. And, you know, we had a really cool presentation with uh, Jeannie Bondio a few years ago that uh, when she did the, um, when she used to work for the uh, sheriff's office in Los Angeles on finding missing persons with her bloodhounds, and it's just amazing. So those are, that's the first thing is they can smell it in a diffuser. So you can diffuse it around them. They can smell more than we can. So we can't smell that over here necessarily, but Player and George, they can smell it. Um, you don't have to, smell it for a few you don't have to no. Oh. All right. Second way is topically to their skin. 
So you can put it on their skin, you can put it on their, usually the best spot to put it on is, we'll show you when we bring player out, is right behind their neck on their spine. And you put it on their spine, it gets into their whole system because it gets absorbed really quick. It gets absorbed much quicker on their spine than it does if they ingest it. So you think about ingesting something, it'll get, but it has to go through your digestive system to, to actually get to work, right? If it goes directly into your bloodstream, it works a lot faster. So you put it on their spine, or you can put it directly on. Do you want to tell us about your, your issue with your buddy this week, Jack? <laughs> Talk about his legs when you put it on. Yeah, she texted me. She was like, Did you take pictures by any time? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Yes. Open sores and scab. It was scab building when I started the tissue oil. So, did you put it in the video? She did straight. Yeah. I think I did one or two. I put it on my hand and then just rub it in. Oh. But it, it's two to the end of the day. So it's still started. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's pretty amazing. She texted me. She was like, I can't believe it, it worked that fast. It was like two days. And his, you know, it's almost completely healed. We've been fighting this for four months. Yeah. So, and I've got one that we can pass around about Zella's belly for you guys who haven't seen it. Because I used it on my dog Zella on her belly. I used some oils. She had some horrible rashes that I worked on for months with the vets. And nothing ever worked. And in 48 hours, I had the same results. Um, it cleared up the rash on her belly so fast. So topically is another one you can use. Um, they can also ingest it internally. So the tea tree, tea tree oil from doTERRA will not kill your dog if you use it properly. Okay, like she put a little bit on him, he licked it off. It probably was already really absorbed when he licked anyway, but it's not going to kill him, uh, you know, unless you dump a whole bottle on them. So and there's a lot of stupid stuff online that says Yeah, it. yeah, there is. If you Google it, it'll say, oh, don't use tea tree oil. It's going to kill your dog. But we talked about that last week. So, um, so those are the three ways that you can use essential oils with your dogs. So we've got, oh, yeah, you want to pass that around? That'd be great if anybody hasn't seen it. The one picture is of the rash that was on Zella's belly. And then the other one was two days, two days later. It was right before Thanksgiving. 48 hours. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? So, yeah. So, three cool things. Does anybody know what the three cool things are? You guys already know what the three cool things are. So these guys that are new. The three cool things that we just talked about. Yes. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> she is on the I think ball. She gets the oil for that one, man. You do actually. You know what, Caprice? You do. She's gonna get a wild orange oil just for that. Okay, because that was really just on. And then, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have a quiz about the way you can use them after we talk about the oils. So the first oil we're gonna talk about, and today's theme of our our whole thing is um, we're talking about skin and hair, primarily because Noelle has a corgi. She's gonna bring out here in a minute. We're gonna put some on him, um, player. And if you don't know player's little background, do you want to tell what happened to player real quick? Yeah. Let me come up here so yeah, the please people in TV here. land can see me. Please come up here in TV land. Yeah, so um, <laughs> Player got attacked by my neighbor's dog. He was actually, the neighbor broke, the dog broke a hole in the fence, and he reached through and grabbed him by his head and his neck and pulled him through the fence and attacked him. And, How um, old was he? He was um, two and a half at the time. Little guy. And... Um, my neighbor just stuffed him back through the fence and called me and said that there'd been um, a dog fight. And so when I got home, I came home to two bloody dogs. He grabbed two of my dogs and pulled them through the fence and attacked them and um, rushed them to the vet. And of course, the vet um, was Edward Scissorhands and just absolutely shaved him all over the place. 
And, um, you know, I realized that they were doing what they felt was best at the time, but it damaged his coat and it never grew back. And he was one of my show prospects. And so he's got points towards his championship, but he'll probably never finish because his coat is so screwed up. But I've been doing some essential oils and um, I'll bring him out here in just a second. And you guys can see the new hair growth that's coming in because it's coming in in these funky little clumps. <laughs> So, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty rough looking, but um, my hope is that these clumps start to just grow and, and come together and maybe he will get to show again. I don't know, but um, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing how some of these oils will help. At first, I was just using Copaiba to try to bring it in, but there's so many blends out there. And um, this is one of them that I'm really excited to present to you guys. So today. we did some so. research and put it together. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. want to just continue to talk about rosemary oil? Because that's one yeah. of the, the three three oils we're going to talk today are rosemary, black spruce, and frankincense. Yeah, so, so. rosemary is on the gross list. And the gross list is generally um, recognized as safe. And this is a, a list that's put out by the FDA. Um, while it's a safe oil, care still needs to be given in how it's delivered to the dog. So we don't want to overdo rosemary oil. Um, it's used in French hospitals to clear the air as part of the blends that they use. Um, and then Dr. Melissa Shelton also uses it in her veterinary clinic as a blend that she has um, going all the time in her office. Um, it has been known to um, help kennel situations like... Um, some of the coughs and things that dogs can get when there's a large population of dogs. So um, if used in doggy daycares, groomers, veterinary offices, boarding facilities, it has a chance to reduce the coughing and the um, other diseases that are communicable and, and um, dogs can catch. It's also got bug repelling properties, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, Rosemary's benefits include liver protection, stimulation of hair growth, reduction of blemishes. It's an anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasitic, and um, it gives enhanced mental clarity. So, yeah, so if you're suffering like me and you can't remember why you walked in the room. <laughs> we have it diffusing over here. Yeah. The only room I ever really remember why I'm in there is the bathroom. <laughs> the rest of the time I just wander around going, what am I doing? <laughs> why am I in here? Um, you know, there's been a lot of interesting research on rosemary. Studies show that the tracheal muscle contractions due to inflammation and irritants are lessened when they're exposed to this oil. So I thought that was really kind of cool. Um, it can aid in treating um, trachea issues. So like collapsed tracheas or um, what's mega? Oh, mega esophagus. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Those types of things. So I thought that was another thing that's really cool. Um, it may be used as a blend, and I think it does best as a blend rather than as by itself. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can use this in a blend. So this three-part blend that we've got for you guys, we're going to talk about each one of the oils that went into it. Um, there was, there's a couple of urban, urban legends around. Um, would you grab me my water? <laughs> Where did yeah, you it's right by my chair. Oh, right there. Awesome. I thought it was on her desk. I'll take it. Thank you. Sorry. I'm taking a medication that makes my mouth really dry. So I feel like my lips are sticking together. <laughs> there we go. That's never good. Never good. So um, there's a couple of urban legends. One of them is that it's not safe to use if you've got high blood pressure. And another one was that it was cause, cause seizures or epilepsy. And there's been several studies that were done. One of the biggest ones was done by Tisserand and Young that kind of dispelled the notion that um, this will cause epilepsy, seizures, or um, what was the other one? High blood pressure. Yeah. So it is safe to use. You definitely want to dilute this oil. So if you're going to use it by itself, you want to use one drop of rosemary oil per 20 parts of um, fractionated coconut oil or some other type of carrier oil. And then you would give one drop of that dilution serum that you've got together per 20 pounds per dog if you're going to use it just by itself. Um, 
the best way to use rosemary is to diffuse it in the air, but it can also be used topically. So if you're going to use it topically, you want to use it as that dilution blend that I just talked about. And the best place to put it is between um, the shoulder blades on the back of your dog's neck. So we'll bring player out here in a minute after we've talked about all this stuff and you guys can see what he looks like and, and we'll put a little bit on to show you how to do that. Here so, um, yeah, that's my rosemary talk. Did I forget anything, Linda? For humans, yeah, they are truly the dog experts. I'm a human mm -hmm. <laughs> um, expert. Um, uh, they use rosemary oil for uh, primarily women, but people who have lost their hair, you know, their mm -hmm. enhanced hair regrowth. And uh, it is for literally will help regrow uh, liver tissue. It's hugely amazing. It also opens up the respiratory tree. Um, it's my husband's absolute favorite oil. He has a lot of food allergies, and he can he can have literally one potato chip and eat any more. And wow! He won't have he won't use an inhale or anymore because he uses his oils. And rosemary is one of the oils that I put in a special blend that I make for him. It has like five or six other oils, and it just opens his lungs up, and he doesn't need anything. I love that. I also I also found that it uh, helps prevent um, prevent premature graying and dandruff, mm -hmm. and helps with dry itchy scalp. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So rosemary, um, as I dug into it, was like, wow, this is a really great oil. Yeah, and um, it's, you can use it in cooking too. I put that in a pot roast or whatever, and cooked with it. Mm -hmm. A couple of drops. It smells really good. Yep. Any questions? How would you guys use rosemary oil? It does smell good, doesn't it? Right. So if you've got allergies or maybe you've got breathing problems, that might be a great way to use it. Um, maybe you're, my hair's getting thinner as I get older and I've always had really great hair. And I don't know if it's because I'm gray now, I can see my scalp or if I'm losing hair, what it is, but I'm anxious to try it on myself. So yeah, awesome. Thank you guys. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might use it on the dry, itchy scalp thing mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. like, this is crazy, but, like, I try and, I know it's not good to wash your hair every night, and so sometimes I'll, I'll be three or four days without washing it, and um, I'm like, I need to wash my hair, I need to wash my hair, and my scalp is, like, dry and itchy, but... I'll go to places and five people will compliment my hair. I love it. And you'll smell great. Yeah. 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 I love it. So if you were gonna do it for dry itchy scalp, would you just put it with the oil and just rub it on your skin? I would dilute it and uh, with the coconut oil and put it in your in your hair. Just yeah. Put it on the scalp. Yeah, I would totally. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's yeah, it's crazy. crazy. For, my, for my clients who are recovering from chemotherapy and um, regrowing their hair, I have them put it in a uh, little spray bottle the size of those little spray bottles that are back there on, on the table. Um, this size. Oh, and uh, I actually have a blend of five different oils that uh, includes rosemary. And fill it up with fractionated coconut oil, put a towel on the pillow. Yeah. And it will cause your hair to grow thicker and fuller and probably take care of your itchy scalp, make it more shiny. Yep. 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 And um, so that's awesome. That's all I got. Well, that's Rosemary. And yes. We're going to go over the, the next two. Do you want to grab player while I'm talking? Sure. Um, Okay, so black spruce. Has anybody ever who who would have even thought about black spruce oil? When she was when I told her, she was like, "Really? Okay." So um, black spruce oil. It's made from the needles of the black spruce tree. That's where the oil comes from. That's where it's what it's extracted from. It has historically been used by Native Americans for centuries um, to promote skin health as part of their spiritual cleansing and um, their healing practices. So um, it has, I can't, I'm gonna truly try to pronounce this. Bornal acetate is a natural occurring chemical in black spruce. It is 
um, it, it can be used, the boronyl acetate portion of it, to treat symptoms of different kinds of skin irritations that are dermatitis, eczema, that sort of thing that the boronyl acetate will help with. So it can, just using black spruce by itself will soothe minor skin irritations and it's, it's very, well, we've got it diffusing over there. It's calming. So let's just let's just pass it around. I'll start it with Kelsey. These three are diffusing. Yes, mm -hmm. they are diffusing, and I got a little sample bottle of them for you guys to take home. So yay! <laughs> um, it is. Um, it's been used to um, to quell like skin irritations that are caused by a hormone imbalance or some type of stress so you can use it it'll help with that sort of thing if you've got a breakout of some sort because you're stressed or you have some imbalance going on black spruce can help take that down okay so it's used to treat that and the last one we want to talk about i would yes yes you know how you walk into a, a forest and it's almost impossible to be angry I mean, it just you just feel better. Literally, boronyl acetate mm -hmm. counters chemically at the cellular level. Chemically counters anger. It's almost impossible to be angry in a forest. Can I have a gallon of that? Can I bathe in that before work? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You can put some on Rachel when you go in the courtroom. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Seriously. Seriously, you could. We need to get you a little diffuser to put, to put on. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you could get one of those collar diffusers and put it on her. So people, when they touch it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's a whole nother thing. So, and then the last one we're going to talk about is um, frankincense. Fra I, Frankenstein. Frankincense. <laughs> oh, I'll put the, I love frankincense. And I was wor I was concerned about how these three together would smell, but they smell really good together. So, nice. yeah. So they're kind of earthy. It's got like an earthy smell to it. But uh, anyway, the frankincense, we're just going to touch on what it's going to do for player in this particular situation because the uses for frankincense in our in our little book is like three, four pages. <laughs> And we don't have time today to go over all of the uses for frankincense oil. Um, it's been it's been used for centuries. Uh, the ancient Egyptians used it in perfumes, and and they actually used it in salves for soothing the skin. So it's been used for skin irritations for literally thousands of years. Um, it's obviously very valuable. It's oh, I thought you were going to say something. I was waiting for you to come up and say something. So. <laughs> It's, it's very valuable, and it's got, um, okay, so tell me if I'm saying this wrong. Apinine, is that right? Alpha pinene, okay. Apinine in my book. Um, it's, a, it's a little slanted function. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, gotcha. That makes sense. So alpha pinene, it is, that's the chemical that's naturally occurring in frankincense oil that um, they've clinically found it to maintain healthy skin structure. So that's, that's another reason why we're going to use it on player, right? Um, the benefits of it in this particular instance, like I said, there's pages and pages, but what we're talking about today, it stimulates blood circulations uh, to the scalp and the hair follicles, and it helps promote hair growth in that way. So it's going to help stimulate his skin, as for people it would stimulate your hair, your, your skin follicles in your hair, for him on his skin. Um, and it will reduce the amount of hair loss for him, help to reduce that for us and probably for him. Because I know a lot, well, I see a lot on... Um, on social media about people that have spayed, early spay and neuters where they've got, you know, oh, they've got spay code or, you know, whatever because they've spayed them too early. Well, 
you can help mitigate that by using frankincense oil because it gets in there at a cellular level and, and it helps with that. And it helps with the dry splitting. You know, some, some dogs have split ends on their coat, basically frayed ends like we get. And um, <clears throat> it can help with that. It also adds shine and smoothness to your hair without being greasy. So there you go, Gwenda, you should be using some frankincense oil. <laughs> So all three of these things can be used in the three ways we discussed earlier. Do you guys remember? Yes. Yes. Good for you. Yay. Do I have anything here? I do. I have another wild orange. I didn't label it. Look at that. Okay, cool. So those are the three ways that we can use these three oils on our dogs. And Noelle is going to bring Claire over here. Ooh, we don't have a grooming table to put them on. This is a heart attack waiting to happen. I know. Poor little buddy. But Poor you guys, little buddy. You know, George is a, is a, is a corgi. And you, so you know what their coat should look like. Isn't that um, sad? Part of what I think happened, and we talked about this, Noel mm -hmm. and I discussed, we believe that a lot of his hair issue is due to an emotion, the emotional stress that he never got over the trauma of the attack. And that has affected him cellularly. Mm -hmm. How old was he? He was two and a half. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And how old is he now? He is five. Wow. Yeah. And so he's long. still got, I don't know if you can see, just bald patches on his neck. Mm -hmm. Did, he, did you check his thyroid? Yes. She's checked everything. Yeah. yeah, we've done like the whole, then I was thinking maybe Addison's or Cushing's or something like that because of the coat, but he doesn't have any disease that's causing this. It's just what we got right now, huh? But I don't know if you guys can see these weird little clumps <laughs> <laughs> of hair that are coming out. So um, it... <laughs> George. George, what you doing, huh? Georgie, porgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll let him. You have him for a minute while I put this on him. Um, so, so I put together a blend of these three oils with some fractionated coconut oil, which we also have at, with doTERRA. Um, and we're going to put this on him. And this bottle is for Noel. So she's going to take this home, and she's going to put this on him twice a day. Mm -hmm. And we talked about putting it on them. You can put it on them twice a day, sometimes three times a day, which uh, Kelsey and I have discussed with her dog. Um, she's putting a little bit of some things on him at noon to help with the issues that he has. But basically one drop of diluted, of the diluted mixture per 20 pounds of your dog. So mm -hmm. how much does he weigh? He weighs 30 pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a little bitty He's feller. a little guy. Yeah, so we're going to put... Basically, two. I would do two, two drops. Two drops uh, twice a day on him, on his spine, and she's also going to use this to shampoo him when she gives him a bath. Mm -hmm. She's going to put it and just, you know, massage it all over him. And we're going to. Um, the Copaiba I was doing for um, about three months, and so that's where these little the tufts have come from. Um, and then he was he gets beer and egg baths, and I know that sounds really weird, but the beer and egg baths have actually helped with um, bringing in the coat. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures of his bald spots, and um, I'll take some more pictures as we go, just so you guys can kind of see and follow along with his story. And because we haven't started this yet, this yeah, is brand new. We haven't new. started this blend yet, so this is brand new, and so I'm excited to see what it'll do, and hopefully all these tufts will. <laughs> Even out, yeah. Well, the stuff that you used before, mm -hmm. what was it called? Co Copaiba. Copaiba. That's the one we talked about last week. Yeah. How was that supposed to help? It's one of the benefits, many benefits of Copaiba um, is, hair? is hair regrowth. Yeah. Um, Copaiba it, maybe skin hair. It, so yeah, skin, skin and hair. hair. It also mm -hmm. helps with inflammation. Mm -hmm. So, and the Frank. Did he improve? Yes, he did. So that's where these, that's where this has come in from, is um, from the Copaiba. And the only thing I used was Copaiba on him. Um, and it's interesting because his face looks normal. Yeah. Uh -huh. The rest of them. Yep. So what, what's different, like, okay, 
you did the cold applying kind of for three months. Mm -hmm. So what is the recommended time to stay with one product before changing to another regime? That's a question for Linda, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they just, through their research, have discovered the other, the rosemary and the black spruce and the uh, frankincense. Uh, a couple of other things about frankincense. Frankincense, if you don't know what to put on something, put frankincense on it. Mm -hmm. It has uh, 25 different uh, chemical components in very small amounts. So it will work on anything. It's just got 25 different facets of things that it'll do. If you've got a, a dark spot on your skin, put frankincense on it, it'll lighten it. If you've got, you know, just, oh yeah. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Um, oh. There's, there's thousands of research articles on the, the medicinal benefits of frankincense. We're not allowed to say because the FDA doesn't like it. Uh, there's thousands of articles in clinical research on frankincense in cancers if you don't know what to put on something put frankincense on it okay so and copaiba that's c-o-p-a-i-b-a -A, copaiba the um uh, some people say copaiba i said you know, i tell people to remember it by copa cabana <laughs> and she can still use the copaiba on him in addition to this. I would recommend it because it's it's a great anti-inflammatory. One of the other things that frankincense does is it helps with emotional distress. Mm -hmm. um, if you smell it, it smells a little bit like <laughs> they used to have it in, in, uh, in funeral homes, okay, for people who are grieving, right? Um, many, many, many years ago, I had a dog... Uh, that had, well, one of, one of my dogs had just passed away and I took my other dog to a, a thing in Denver that was on acupuncture and, and therapies and they passed oils around for the dogs to smell them and the one that she just stuck her nose into was frankincense and the lady that was doing the, the class said, well, did someone just die? And I was like, yes, her brother just died like two weeks ago and she's like, well, this is what she needs because that was what she was drawn to was help or emotionally drawn to. So because I think he suffered an emotional trauma, I'm hoping that the frankincense will help with that. And I know it sounds weird, but he sees a dog psychic and he told the psychic that he was very, he wanted us to put in a floodlight in the back so that he could see if the dog was coming. He's still scared. Mm -hmm. It's still there. So I'm gonna let Noel show you guys where to put this on player. Let's get him in front of the camera yeah. so everybody can see it. Hey, little man. <laughs> Come here, player. Player. Come here, buddy. But I found a friend. <laughs> I know. There we are. Now so, we're in the middle of the cube. Right here at the base of the neck um, where the neck ends and the spine begins, this is where we want to start it. And you're going to part the hair a little bit. And then I'm just going to put two drops if I can. And that is already done. Yes. yes. Come out. There, just Here tapping we go. twice. Awesome. And then um, what happens when you put it on the spine is it immediately enters the bloodstream. So this is the fastest and most effective way to put oils onto a dog. Um, that bloodstream then carries it to all of the vital organs and all of the places that it needs to go. So um, it is absorbed really quickly and um, I'm really excited to see the benefits of, of this. So I'm definitely gonna be adding this to his egg and beer bath. And um, I'm gonna take pictures of those bald spots on his neck and we'll do some before and after pictures so you guys can see how the hair is coming back in. Um, I also use frankincense. I've got a, I got bit by a dog and I've got a big scar on my, on my belly. And um, I've been using frankincense on that and it's actually breaking down the scar tissue and it's looking so much better. Hi little man. So yeah. yeah. And it was a big thick and it, it was a, well a painful scar. It hurt to touch it. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, oh thank you, you for this. Yep. Yeah, that's yours. Okay. So, on, like a, a man's ball spot. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> hi, honey. <laughs> it is. 
boy. You're doing so good. I'm so proud of you. Okay, come up. In you go. Good boy. So I didn't put the little um, stoppers boy, in these because George. last week we had such an issue getting it out. But I'm going to give you guys a stopper if you want to put it in there. So don't open it and tip it up. It'll just dump everything out. But this is the blend if you want to smell it. And if you do use the stopper, and I do recommend it, put the stopper in there and you just tap it on the back. You can hold it upside down and you, you know, try for... Oh, and I only made five, so you guys trip. have to share. Oh, okay. Since you go home to sure. the same house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bless you. Or you can pour it underneath the dog's neck. Okay, that's the stuff. So, so the, stopper, the stopper just keeps it from just pouring out. Yeah, it just has a little droplet in the top. Remember last week we get we had these and um, they uh, it's hard to get them out. You have to oh, yeah. tap it on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So I just didn't put them in this time because you know I wanted you guys to be able to choose if you wanted to do that or not. So that is all we've got for our presentation today, and I'm going to turn it over to Linda. She's going to talk to you guys a little bit about. Well, beginning with the theme of threes, first of all, if you do an awesome job. Here's yours. Yeah. Here's yours. And Linda's awesome, by the way. She has so many little um, initials behind her name, I can't even tell you what they are. Doesn't um, matter. Degrees. She has degrees. That doesn't matter. Degrees. Too much stuff. But. I, I, I think she needs a little acknowledgement because she's been doing this, what, five months? I don't know. Yeah, not, not long. And she and Noelle, and Noelle, this is the first time Noelle's been up here. If you ever decide, honey, on a, on a, um, change, a of change of careers and, and, and going into comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly, clearly. <laughs> um, so they're still learning how to do this, and they've put these classes together all, all by themselves. I've not helped them at all. They've, they've done this. They've opened up their space just, you know, out of the love of the animals and, and the love of people and to, to help you guys. So uh, they bring me in to uh, go over the last part, which is three ways to buy oils. Okay, so there's three ways to buy oils, and the first way is retail. And I don't recommend retail. It's the most expensive way to buy retail. Nobody here is going to buy retail. I mean, we really don't recommend it. Um, the second way is to buy wholesale. Okay, and the way you buy wholesale is you set up an account. Um, the reason we only use doTERRA is because there is a study that went out by, you're familiar with consumers adv advocates? Where, you know, they go out and they study, you know, all the best toasters and they give you all the information. About. They went out and studied uh, the top essential oil companies in the United States. And they studied 11 com companies and they did 21 oils out of 11 companies. And they found all but three of them were contaminated. Yes, and the only three that were not contaminated is doTERRA, a company called Ameo. I've never seen a bottle of their oil. I've never heard of them. And a company called Aromatics International which unless you are in aromatherapy school, you've probably never heard of. My aromatherapy certification, I was thrilled to know that they used clean oils. Um, but I went with doTERRA um, for a lot of different reasons, but mainly because they're pure. So we all use um, doTERRA and we all have wholesale accounts. Now there is one other way to buy your oils and that's below wholesale. And that's the only way I buy my oils. I started that way long before I went into this as, as a business. You do not have to teach classes and sell oils to be able to get your oils at below wholesale. So the way you do it below wholesale is you set up a doTERRA account and you start with a kit. And Do doTERRA has several different kits that you can start with that are called enrollment kits. And basically what happens is we'll say, um, in, in, in a little bit, we'll just come by and you know sit down next to you and say, what are we working on, right? And we'll help you identify what's the best kit for you. And then what doTERRA does is they take that kit and they take a discount off the wholesale price. So you're getting your oils below wholesale. Then to continue that below wholesale, you are not required to purchase every month. However, if you do, and you do it with what we call the loyalty rewards program, then uh, loyalty, you know, that means monthly. Uh, if you place a small order every month, 
then you get a percentage put back into your account as points that you can spend any way that you want to, right? And so you're getting, um, when you have a wholesale account, you're getting 25% off retail. When you have, when you're buying your oils uh, on loyalty rewards every month, it takes a year. You start out getting 10% put back into your account. Right, just go to Vitamin Cottage and try to buy two hundred dollars worth and and have them give you a a forty dollar check. Right, it, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but that's that's basically the way it works. They um they give you ten percent. I said a forty dollar check, twenty a twenty dollar check on at ten percent, and then uh, you do that for three months, and it goes up to fifteen percent, and you do that for three months, and it goes up to twenty percent, and after about uh, thir in your thirteenth month, it goes up to um, thirty uh, thirty thirty percent. So you combine that 30% with the 25% that you get off for being a wholesale customer, and that's 55% off. So I pay 55% off retails. It has nothing to do with the fact that I sell this. They pay 55% uh, off. And, you know, as you two, they just set up accounts. Three of them. Three of them. Well, one I was going to, I started, I, I'm going, no, Ashley's had hers. Yeah. One <laughs> But Glenda and Kelsey set up an account last week. If they continue to order consistently, they'll be in the same place where they're uh, at 55% less than retail. So that's what we recommend. Now, doTERRA has a special that if you place a uh, an order, you an enrollment order in this month, and you place a 100-point order, now a point is a dollar on oils. Okay, on most of the oils. Um, doTERRA is an international company, and so they had to have a consistent point value because the yen and the Dutch mark are not the same as, you know, the American dollar. So they, everything is based on points. So a point is a dollar on um, most of your oils. And so if you place a enrollment order of at least 100 points, and then you place a 100-point order in February, then in March... Doterra is going to give you 100 points back into your account. That's effectively $100 back. Try to get that at well at natural grocers, <laughs> right? It is not going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come around, and for those of you that don't have accounts, we're just going to you know see what you're working on and see what we can help you. And I let you know what the um, what the kits are, and uh, and go from there. Does that sound fair? Is that a gallon? <laughs> 